and here's where I'm going to start to get into trouble. Some types of healing energy may not be compatible with some types of conventional medical. We just heard a talk, we're trying to augment chemotherapy. Any clinical failure that I've ever seen has been associated with a conventional treatment. And so, and I, don't, I really don't mean this to be facetious, but it sounds it, and it probably is poorly worded, perhaps healing and killing are incompatible. If the purpose of the treatment is to kill, and the purpose of the treatment is to heal, maybe they ought not to go together. If you're going to go to a cure by killing, go for it. If you're going to go for a cure by healing, go for it. If you're going to go and try to get all parts, all ways, and cover all your bets, you may be minimizing your chances for success. This needs to be experimentally verified. I was very close to being able to do this in a double-blind study on radiated mice, and we lost all our, it doesn't matter. Proposition seven, this is the last one, and this is the one I am least confident about, and this is gonna get me in trouble. Healing can be taught. I'm gonna suggest there is no really good evidence to that effect. There are suggestions. It's widely assumed healing can be taught, and I once claimed it in a JSE article. Last year I published an article in Explore asking can healing be taught? And I had to retract part of the JSE article because I think I just didn't think through it deeply enough. And perhaps it can, perhaps, I'm not saying it can't, I'm saying let's be clear about whether we have evidence. Now it is certainly the case, experientially, that most healers were themselves taught. And if you go to talk to any healer, say, yeah, I had my master so-and-so, and they taught me, and this happened, and that happened, and all that stuff, but other controlled pre-post-tests. And there are very many methodological difficulties associated with the question. In the JSE article I did, I think it was 2000, I claim, I took inexperienced, non-believing subjects, I taught them my healing techniques, I gave them a bunch of cages of mice, they did what you saw there, they got mad at me for being bored to tears themselves, and they, they, did, they went through the procedure, and their mice got better. I said, hey, slam dunk, healing can be taught. And what that really means is I didn't think it through. First of all, could they have done it anyway? Maybe I'm the only lunatic dumb enough to try this. We don't have a pre and a post, we have a post. I taught something, something happened as a consequence. Could they have done it before? I don't know. Who am I to take credit for that? And there are many, many methodological difficulties associated with the question. In particular, and this is an article I did in Alternative and Complementary Medicine, and it was the basis of a talk I gave a couple years ago to this group. In my healing experiments, the experimental and the control groups become entangled. And my problem is getting the mice to die. I know that sounds silly, but I don't mean it facetiously. So if I'm doing a treatment on an experimental group, and I'm aware of, I'm, I'm making this too simple, but I'm aware of the control group, the control group will remit. My students who have learned this and, and reproduced the healing cures, when they've wandered into the lab where the control groups are, the control groups are dying on schedule. When the students go into the lab, the, the, all of the controls that are still alive will now remit. That's a methodological problem. <laughs> it's also pretty interesting. But you can see how this relates to can healing be taught. So let's assume that it's going all over the place, and I got a cage here and a cage here, and I got uh, someone here, uh, and they're doing a test, and someone there, they're doing a test, and everything gets better. Did I teach them? Or did it happen as in, like the controls are getting better? It becomes a really tough problem. And so if we've got resonant bonding, we got the, a serious problem here of type two errors. And I know there's a bunch of statisticians here. In a type two error, we're going to wrongly conclude that nothing happened when something really happened. So my advantage is I have mice that die. I know what should have happened. When I do a study though, I take my mice and I do this, but those mice get better too. 
Now, if you're traditionally trained, you'll say there's no difference between the two. They all got cured. And since they all got cured, nothing happened. You follow? That's a type 2 error. Why? There's no difference between the two. I've had biologists say that to me. Well, what's the difference between the two? I said, no, you don't get the question. They goes, no. What's the difference between the two? I, well, they all got cured. Nothing happened. It's kind of frustrating out there. So a treatment to an experimental group can also result in a treatment to a control group. And the treatment effects are really interesting. If I'm treating a cage here, and there's controls that are out at the registration desk, and in between here and there, there's a whole bunch of experimental animals, these will get better, those will get better, and nothing in between will be affected, even if it's the identical animal. Same strain, same everything. So I've done this in some medical schools where there's dozens of the same lab going on. I'm treating in one lab, they, everything gets better, the controls get better, and they have dozens of, of labs work on the identical mouse. Nothing is affected, it's very selective. And more interestingly, or perhaps equally as interesting, control groups that I don't know about get better too. But they have to be part of my experiment. If they're bonded in the experiment, any animal in the experiment will get better, even if I don't know that the animals exist. That's interesting. So we get these, this is just five, I've done many more with hundreds of mice. But my experimental mice, 91.7% like full cure, and the only failures I've really had are when the students are biologists. I'll leave that out there. That's actually the case, yeah. So it's like the old thing that Grad found. You know, you don't want uh, uh, medical students near sick people. Uh, when he did experiments on them uh, to show that, in fact, healing doesn't work, and Grad was looking into healing, he tried skeptical medical students, and they caused harm. His conclusion was, you know, well, I'll leave it out there. Now, in these particular I got an 80.5% full cure of controls. And this number is low. And the reason it's low is because this is the overall number for the controls if we only included the controls once they had been discovered by the students, it would be the same number. Because once the animals are seen, they get cured. And there seems to be an outside sphere of influence that will allow the mice to die. So experimental and control mice can become bonded, and I'm speculating here, either through exposure to someone who knows a healing technique that will work, or by the consciousness of the experimenter. Even if the experimenter doesn't know the healing technique. So I've had graduate students assigned to me, they assumed they were being punished. And they go, oh, God, i got to go wheel around mice for this lunatic, you know, they're doing that. And then at the end, after the mice start to remit, they go, uh-oh, here he is, and they go running away, so I won't screw up their experiments. Graduate students who don't know the healing technique have set up experimental protocols with second and third control groups all over the place I don't know about. I don't know about. Those controls remit. That's interesting. And it also can result in type 2 errors. So it becomes extremely difficult to demonstrate that healing can be taught. No pre-post. If you've got resonant bonding, you can, you can type 2 error your brains out. You can type 1 error and think that something did happen when it didn't. And there's all sorts of methodological complications. And so, final questions for just this, and these are things that I don't know. What happens when healing occurs? I mean, it's kind of like the fundamental question. What is it that it is? I think a really interesting question is, do different healing techniques produce different results? So, mine, for whatever reason, work pretty well on cancer. Here comes a standing joke, but it's literally